how do you sort of approach or what, what helped you or, or made you create a single revolution? What, what was, what, what was behind the book? Oh God, so many things. I think, um, I think at its core, it was about self-worth and a single person's self-worth, their self-esteem, the way they look at themselves against the rest of the world and the narratives that they had been fed about singlehood, about their own singlehood and what it said about them. And the fact that every single one of those narratives was fucking lying. There was never, ever anything wrong with being single. We came into the world as single people. That's how we were born. It's actually partnering up is the massive life change. And that's the massive like, whoa, this is a different way to live. Not singlehood. Singlehood is just continuing to exist. If you think about it, like, but there are so many shame soaked narratives about singlehood, particularly if you're a single woman. And by the way, why is there no guys and times? Why is it just Galentine's? Why is it just assumed that only single women have a problem with Valentine's Day and not single men? Like, don't get me started on fucking Galentine's Day. Anyway. Um, it preach, was preach. So I'm not alone in it. <laughs> it was the narratives. It was the narratives about singlehood that were so degrading and so demeaning and so full of shame. And every one of them was lying because there is nothing about singlehood that indicates failure, that indicates unwantability, unlovability. Um, there is, there is, I have a hard time with people making single people feel like shit. I have a really, really hard time with that. And I'm already sweating talking about this. It's just, um, there is an industry, there is a societal culture, there are countless narratives that prey on the vulnerabilities of single people and also perpetuate the vulnerabilities of single people, telling us that it's our fault, that we're doing something wrong, that we are, we're not dating the right way. We don't have the right words in our profile or the right kind of picture, or don't say this on this date or try it on this day, or don't text back within this hour, but at this time you should say this and this text, like stop all of it. Stop all of it. Because if you talk to people who are actually in relationships, who actually met somebody, either in the wild or on a dating app, it's not going to be this, I followed these five steps and then my person showed up, but somebody's still going to pay a thousand dollars to learn those five steps in someone's masterclass. I don't, I don't like the ways that the world shames and then takes advantage of single people, particularly single women. And that's why I wrote a book because I think we can feel a lot better about ourselves when we start telling a lot more truth about what we are. And when you feel better about being single, you are so much less vulnerable to being preyed upon or to being shamed. And that's what I would like for us. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's very frustrating. And, and I think we uh, on the podcast definitely share that same view of formulas. Like, I can't stand formulas. Uh, there is no one formula that has worked for anybody ever. Uh, but this industry is only perpetuated because of this, of people selling formulas. And I also tell people, I'm like, the reason they want you to have kids and this whole, you know, uh, anti-abortion stance and all this stuff is really not rooted in any form of religion is rooted in consumer and business. So the economy is known to, uh, they're literally projecting that 50% of the economy will fall because we don't have enough people to feed into consumerism. So the economy will fall if we don't have more kids. That's why they want you to have more kids. It's not because of there's any religious reason behind it. It's all economics. So all of the, sa the same stuff, like coupling up together, you know, you spend more money when you are a family. I mean, my friends who have kids and a family, they're spending like 400 or some ridiculous amount a week to feed their kids. I'm just like, good Lord. Like I can't, my best friend when she has a husband and two boys and the amount that she spends, it's crazy. Um, but all of this is like, it's an industry that is feeding this narrative that that being alone is wrong. And, uh, and our experience, no matter what, ha even when you are a couple, is always singular. Mm -hmm. Right. Meanwhile, the planet is like, please stop having kids. I know. <laughs> there's so many of you. I, I can't do this. There's, there's too many of you. Please stop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's what you, you know, something you talk about is like, uh, the being single is not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, precisely that. Uh, so in that sense, then 
is dating mandatory? Oh God, no, no. It's, um, I mean, if you do an inventory of everyone, you know, everyone in your own life who's in partnership and you find like how they met, how they came together, you're going to find a pretty small percentage that met each other because they were both hunting each other down through dating. Like it was a mission. Very, very few people. And if you find them, ask them how happy they are. Um, it's, it's just, dating is not required for anything. It's, it's one of those things in life that you can do or not do. It's, it's up to you. If you enjoy it, do it. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, there is no requirement that people date. There is no requirement that people date if they want a partner. These, these uh, narratives that we lock single people into, like, well, if you're single, that's incorrect. And that means that you have to continue to search for your person until you find them because coupled is correct and single is incorrect. It's very passive. It almost becomes like just a normal day-to-day chore almost that you don't even think of like making your bed. It's like, well, I'm single, so I have to date. I'm single, so I have to look for someone. It's just very, it's like laundry. It's very, very passive. It's become a a very much um, one of those autopilot things where your singlehood is a bad thing. It's an incorrect thing. So you have to correct it by finding someone. How do you find someone? You date. None none of this is real. (laughs) None of it is real at all. And I think at the core of it lies the idea that being single is an incorrect way to be. And it's simply not. It's a perfectly allowed way to live your life. This is allowed. This is okay. And it doesn't have to be shameful or lacking or less than or indicative of failure. It really doesn't have to be. Um, but if all you've ever seen is examples of how wrong and shameful and bad and sad and pathetic it is, you're going to try to run from it. So I'm just trying to offer up more narratives, honest narratives about how lovely this can be. And that doesn't mean you have to be single forever. What do you say then to the the folks that like, you know, my, uh, somebody in my family, she uh, is single, but wants someone. And I've always just been like, just chill. But she's like, well, I want someone, but she doesn't like apps. And, but then she works all the time. And so she also doesn't have time to go out in that same sense. So like, what do you say to those people? Cause like, there are people who are single who still like actually want a relationship. Um, is it just, I mean, do you just advise them to kind of lean more into the singlehood and just like accept it or what's that balance? No, I would ask them to look into the urgency of the term want, because for your family member, it sounds like there's some urgency there. And I would want to know where that urgency comes from. Does it come from shame? Does it come from lack? Does it come from the desire for children? Because that's also a huge factor. Um, where does the want come from and where does that urgency come from? And that urgency can generate feelings of panic and frustration. And um, that's at the heart of a lot of a lot of those vulnerabilities that the dating industry will take advantage of. I don't advise anyone to do anything. I don't, um, it's I can't prescribe someone else's life to them. And I think we make big mistakes when we when we think that other people can prescribe our lives to us or, or prescribe solutions to our lives to us. You're right. When you told your family member to just chill, you're right. But it's really hard to just chill when you're a single woman. It's really hard. Um, I hope that my work makes it easier. I hope that that's what it does because um, I've only seen good come from relaxation and contentment and calm and appreciation and gratitude. Those things I think are beautiful qualities in a person. I want those things in a person. So why wouldn't I want to also give them out into the world? Um, but it's it's very hard. The the panic feelings, the urgency feelings, the lack feelings, those were taught to us. And they've been taught to us since the dawn of time. So it's very, very hard to rewrite those narratives for yourself, but it's incredibly possible. Um, and that doesn't mean that your, your family member is going to be single forever. It just means that um, a look at the motivation behind those desires might help um, not release them entirely, but sort of soften that urgency. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and check out our next one. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more amazing dating, love and relationship advice from me and so many expert guests. Follow us on socials. We're at Kinda Dating across the board. I'm Natasha Chindale, so you can find me too if you like. And join our newsletter on www.kindadating.com for lots of exclusives. See you soon.